and it's funny because Ruth is actually marrying a man, an older man, who's capable of providing, but he's, she's also having a child to give to Naomi. She's being a surrogate mother for Naomi just so that she can carry on her tradition, her lineage, so that she can take part in God's promised land. And this uh, redemption happens through Ruth, who is a Moabite, a foreigner, somebody who had you know, been a part of a tribe that turned away from God. She's brought back into the fold here. It's actually through her that this redemption is even able to happen. everybody so we are back with Ruth and we are going to be talking about emptiness fullness and redemption this idea that God's sovereign plan is from Genesis through Revelation consistent with the gospel message and in fact pointing towards Christ and it was really fascinating to me I remember hearing some like you know different uh, sermons and Bible study points about Ruth and I just thought you know what that just seems so goofy like part of that is pride and cynicism on my part I think that uh, there are moral lessons in books like Ruth we see Boaz as an example of biblical masculinity I think that one sign of maturing in your biblical study is this idea that you can look at the Bible on different levels and I think Ruth is a great example of that. There's a moral level that you can look at it. There is a legal level and a historical level. There are different perspectives that you can look at this from, whether it's the moralism of the Boaz's interactions with Ruth and how they kind of put themselves in a compromising situation. We probably shouldn't do that, right? That's not a good example. There's also the level of God using imperfect people in Naomi and Ruth and Boaz and th these people that are unexpectedly being used. Ruth was a foreigner, a Moabite. So anyway, one thing that I think as you mature through the Bible, you might see things on a moral level or as an informational level, like the historicism and uh, a good example of that in Ruth is when they take off the sandal to, you know, secure a transaction. What is that even for? <laughs> There's not even like a a consensus on what that means or what the importance of it was. But when you look at these different things, it can inform how you look at the entire Bible. So by looking at the different levels of uh, moralistic teaching and, um, you know, what's how, examples of biblical masculinity, how to live and practical examples and pragmatism, which is all present in the book of Ruth. But there's also this major theme over the entire thing of emptiness and fullness showing God's redemptive plan from the beginning through the end. And this is a chapter in there. This is why I like the, the idea of symbolism in the Bible as well is because Ruth is symbolic of the entire biblical story. Naomi goes to a foreign land where she is brought low. She's, it's a land of death. So it symbolizes leaving the promises of God and going to this place of death and then being redeemed from that eventually by God's providence. And it's not the expected people. You know, it's not God's people. It's, it's the instrument is actually Ruth, a foreigner. So this idea of this being redeemed and this redemptive story is throughout the entire Bible. And we are redeemed through Jesus Christ. That's the gospel. Jesus died and was resurrected. And through that bought our redemption, our reconciliation with God. So just like I was alluding to, we're going to go through this emptiness, fullness, and redemption. And Naomi's brought from God's promised land, Bethlehem, Judah, into a land of death. Her husband, her sons die. Naomi even loses her own name. In chapter 1, verse 5, instead of calling her Naomi, it says the woman. Now, if you read the NIV, it actually puts her name back in there. Um, but she is actually nameless. And your name was who you were. It was identity. So she's even lost her own identity in all of this. And even when she comes back to Bethlehem after the ordeal with, you know, uh, telling her daughters-in-law to go home, Ruth follows her to Bethlehem. When she gets there, the women are like, is this Naomi? And she says, don't even call me Naomi, right? For the Lord has dealt bitterly with me. Call me Mara, bitter. So 
chapter one, verse twenty. You know, she even she's she's gone through a transformation here. She's gone through death. She has come back home, but she is not brought back. She's not been redeemed yet. It's a process here. And how do they do that? They they actually follow God's law, and that's ultimately the faith of Ruth is what redeems the family. Not necessarily their own actions, not necessarily, but the fact that they are acting in faith and God is blessing those efforts. We'll get to at the end how we may not even see all the fruit of the the you know actions that we take if we're living it out faithfully, but that that doesn't mean we should not do it. So Again, this idea of fullness and emptiness. In verse 21, Naomi says, you know, I went away full and was brought back empty. The Lord brought me back empty. And that's how it goes sometimes, isn't it? We're brought low so that we can be brought back to life. I grew up in the church. And this story really resonated with me because when you look at the symbolic nature of Naomi leaving the house of bread, God's promised land, to go into death, I grew up in the church and I left. I went and I followed a worldly path and I, I tried to make my own way in the world and it brought me low and it brought me back to God's promises. And so it's a very impactful story in that way. I think that's everybody's story. You wake up and you realize you're in the land of death and you want life. This gets turned around though because once Ruth goes into the fields and starts working for Boaz, Boaz is using the law to be generous and he's kind. He's showing genuine kindness to Ruth. He's not taking advantage of his position. He invites her to lunch, and we get the first picture that things are turning around because Ruth eats with them, and she eats until she's full, right? It says she was satisfied. She ate until she was satisfied, and she even had some left over. Where else do we see that? Where do we see somebody showing up to a table with bread and wine, dipping bread in wine? I mean... These themes are throughout for a reason. And this idea of Ruth having enough to eat and then having some left over. What's interesting is it shows what she does with that leftover as well. She takes it back to Naomi. So Ruth could have kept the leftover. She could have kept it. She could have, even in this, been selfish or not taken it back or whatever it is. But she took back more than she needed for Naomi. In doing that, it's showing this reversal of emptiness. They're starting to be full. This is, uh, the redemption is, is starting to happen through Ruth. As she's working, as she's living faithfully, Boaz is filling her up. There's, uh, the ultimate re- redemption, though, doesn't happen until Ruth has a child, Obed, which happens in chapter 4. Chapter 4, verse 17, she has a child. They name him Obed, and There's even this scene where Boaz is saying, this last kindness that you've shown is greater than all the others. And it's funny because Ruth is actually marrying a man, an older man, who's capable of providing, but she's also having a child to give to Naomi. She's being a surrogate mother for Naomi just so that she can carry on her tradition, her lineage, so that she can take part in God's promised land. And this uh, redemption happens through Ruth, who is a Moabite, a foreigner, somebody who had you know, been a part of a tribe that turned away from God. She's brought back into the fold here. It's actually through her that this redemption is even able to happen and through Boaz. So it's this idea of a nation outside of Israel as well as Israel. Boaz is of Israel and her tribe. Ruth is not, though. And it's through this union that the lineage of Christ is restored and continued on. I mean, really, that's a really powerful thing, I think, as well. That's another part of how the world is redeemed in general. Families are so important to that. The the idea of families and procreation and raising up your children and the nurture and admonition of the Lord is the powerful way. It's, It's the way in which God changes things by us living out faithfully generation after generation. And and that's how we got to where we're at. And that's how we're going to continue to redeem the world until Christ comes again. Just like uh, ultimately the redemption of Ruth is pointing to that redemption of Christ on the cross even. Um, 
And again, Naomi goes from death to life. Ruth follows her to life and faithfully follows God. And Ruth is used for her faithfulness, right? Ultimately, um, Ruth is a woman who's selflessly giving herself to redeem others, just as Christ did on the cross, selflessly dying on the cross for our sins. So it's reflecting this gospel message even here in this in this smaller uh, story. It's showing this faithful following. Ruth is basically dying to herself every step of the way. She's not doing the easy thing or the pragmatic thing. She's following in faith, and she's doing the worthwhile thing. She's looking at what what is worthwhile, not necessarily what's easiest. And so this whole idea of selflessly giving yourself to further, to make the world a better place, to further things, and not only that, but to do it for your kin, your clan, your whether it's adopted or not, Ruth, again, a foreigner coming in, Naomi was her mother-in-law. She chose that family. And that family connection was through God, which is thicker than blood. So this idea, you know, again, it's just this very full picture. And the symbolism and the pattern of it, it, there are endless connections to Christ's death on the cross. But all of that summation of the gospel message, death to life, selfless faith, selfless action bringing about redemption, it's all ultimately pointing to the restoration of the line of King David, who restored Israel, like another corporate redemption story, but then also even further down the line to Jesus Christ dying on the cross. Just a fantastic uh, micro gospel story here. It's just four chapters, the gospel contained in this example of God using people for his sovereign plan. So uh, just a fantastic, you know, just so many ways you can go with it. But that's what I've got today. I hope that there was something in there that you like. Put down below in the comments what you think about it, what the connections that you thought were most important or what, you know, what you took away from this story. Like and subscribe to catch all the videos as they come out. I'm going to be coming up with a few other books of the Bible coming out here shortly. And uh, I hope this helped. I hope this was helpful. I'm going to be praying for you. And um, with that, that's all I've got. So I'll catch you in the next video. Peace.